Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. Let's take a look at where we stand so far in the month of April. And you can see for the last three weeks, this is your actual average mean temperatures. It's been predominantly below average for many areas across the West, especially there into Nevada, back into California and into Arizona. But across the middle of the country, you have been above average across the South, much of the upper Midwest and into the Northeast. This this is the setup that has led to an active April month for severe storms, but we are getting a little bit of a reprieve with a fairly significant cold shot of air coming in out of Canada, and that cooler shot has shifted all the way down in the south, and so many areas are experiencing those cooler conditions, and then we even have a reinforcing shot of colder air coming in out of Canada, and that will drop into the upper Midwest and many areas across the Northeast as we head into Monday through your Thursday. And those areas out West are starting to warm up. So I appreciate all my followers out there. If you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily updates on this channel. And I would love to reach 250,000 subscribers and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily breakdowns. So let's, here's the setup this, this afternoon, folks. And yes, this is a welcome sign considering what we've been through for the last three weeks. Yeah, there's hardly any severe weather whatsoever. So it's gonna be a nice day ahead for many parts of the country. And it's all compliments of that colder shot of air that pushes out all the instability, pushes out the precipitation. But out ahead of it, we saw some heavier rains, especially for those areas across the south yesterday. Now that instability has moved off to the east. So we still have some cloud cover to contend with across Kentucky through West Virginia. And then the cold front has sagged further south into the Carolinas along into Florida. You can actually see where the instability is and that lightning strikes out there into the Gulf of Mexico. There's the cold front draped across Georgia back into the Carolinas with all the lightning strikes highlighted across uh, into the Gulf of Mexico. That is going to move over that instability where they could see some stronger thunderstorms into the northern parts of Florida. And in fact, yesterday out ahead of this into the warm sector still, Wow, wow, we saw some massive hail there into North and South Carolina. I think Rock Hill, South Carolina picked up a four inch hailstone, did a lot of devastation. And into North Carolina, they, I think Lumberton had a four and a half inch hailstone, softball size hail, folks. That is some serious stuff. That just tells you the instability in the atmosphere with the updrafts and the significant shot of cooler air for this time of year has led to that more significant hail. So we're gonna get a little bit of a respite. We are experiencing some showers and thunderstorms, but back behind that, we've got much drier air. So that's indicative of that brown and the red, the, the, you know, the, the darker it is, the, the you know the drier it is so we've got a lot of dry conditions back behind that colder shot of air and back behind it we are going to be experiencing actually some frost advisories believe it or not for those areas into indianapolis back into columbus as well as into cincinnati into kentucky even as far south as portions of arkansas yes folks Arkansas could have a little bit of frost. So that's like 35 degrees. So temperatures are expected to dip a little bit low, maybe not quite the freezing mark widespread, but nonetheless, it's something definitely you probably have to cover up the plants for. And even into Providence and in some areas into the Texas Panhandle could actually see a little bit of frost as they wake up. Uh, on Monday morning, but there's the, there's the other system that will come in for those areas across the Great Lakes and much of the Ohio Valley and eventually heading into the north, Northeast. This is a reinforcing shot of cooler air with another disturbance that moving in. It's not gonna be severe or anything like that, really not even, even heavier rainfall. This is just some light to moderate showers that will be spreading across while much of the country is going to be experiencing some really nice weather. So we're gonna have a really nice respite for 
several days to come. So definitely and just enjoy the nice weather while we have it with all the significant changes of what we have seen as of late. So if you do the breakdown between Monday and your Wednesday, as far as the precipitation front, you can see that front is now going to be out into the Atlantic and back behind it, that's much drier conditions. So for all these areas that you see in white here, that's no precipitation, folks. So there's the instability where that trough will come in. And again, this is just kind of light to moderate showers from Monday through your Wednesday through Wisconsin, back into Michigan, through Indiana, into Ohio, as well as into Pennsylvania and up here into New York. So not really expecting much, but nonetheless have some sporadic showers you know, within that region. And the cooler shot of air, this is that reinforcing shot with that overall dip in the jet stream will drop all the way down to the Ohio Valley getting into Kentucky, especially for those areas in the mid-Atlantic into the Northeast, and of course, Ontario and Quebec is really gonna be on the colder side, even some snow up there. But look out west, folks, that's where the big warm up is coming. And eventually that's gonna overtake a good part of the west from British Columbia all the way down to the Southwest. And this will eventually move across from west to east and warm up the middle of the country, setting the stage for unfortunately some more severe storms. And as we head into Thursday, we have another little trough that will be coming in. It's a short wave. It's not fairly significant, but nonetheless, that, that atmosphere is going to be heating up and the dry line is going to get active again in West Texas. And we kind of have a similar setup of what we actually saw just last week as a low pressure looks to form on the eastern side of uh, Colorado there. And then you have the instability out ahead of it. So we should have a classic dry line type setup unfold across West Texas, Western Oklahoma, Western Kansas as the instability becomes a, comes into play as this low pressure continues to deepen likely a 990 millibar low pressure and you have a lot of lift associated with it at, at, at the, the lower levels and again the dry line type setup in the heat of the afternoon would likely see some discrete supercell thunderstorms off the dry line that led to a a, a large hail producer sporadic more isolated last week and then further north right where the low pressure is that's where you're like you're going to have a, the most increased shear so unfortunately that puts kansas more into play for the likelihood of possibly seeing a tornado or two as we head into Thursday night. So there's the dry line setup. I think it gets active as we head towards, you know, maybe after that five o'clock time frame on Thursday. Some instability would tap into this uh, tap into the warm sector, and we should see discrete supercells start to fire within this boundary and then move across the east. And that's why, you know, the Storm Prediction Center has in fact highlighted that risk, right? This is far northwest portions of Texas, back into the Wichita Falls region, say the Childers region, maybe back into Lubbock, right? And then you have western, western regions of Oklahoma, and then of course, western regions of Kansas there, back into Dodge, back into Wichita. So I think Kansas would again, unfortunately, would be the predominant area that we have to look for the more uh, you know, severe st storms as we head into Thursday night. And then as the, as the system continues to move up, up to the, uh, you know, move Northeast, it's going to rapidly deepen. And as it does, it could get down to a 983 millibar. This would likely be on Friday timeframe as we have more instability, a little bit more uh, water vapor associated with this, the higher moisture content pulls in, pulls in out of the Gulf by then. And Friday could be even a more significant day. So if you look at the upper level winds with this low pressure center coming out of Colorado again, heading up into, into Nebraska and eventually setting up shop across southeastern portions of South Dakota and further to the south, we've got the upper level winds screaming about 50, 50 to 60 knots there. And then if you see at the surface with that shear at the surface, that's that's about 40 knots. So we do see some change in directions and height and that would lead to some rotating supercells could lead to some tornadoes. 
uh, as we head into Missouri, back into Iowa again, and then that would swing over into Illinois. So right now, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted that risk for Friday. This would be April the 26th timeframe, getting across the Oklahoma City region, back into Tulsa, through Wichita, as well as into Springfield, into Kansas City, into Topeka. And that would include, unfortunately, back into the Des Moines region, southeastern portions of uh, Iowa there, and into western portions of Illinois. And you can actually see this is almost identical to what we saw just last week with that setup that unfolded uh, last week. So, but as we head into Saturday, it doesn't stop, folks. I mean, that's why I said, don't, you know, this is enjoy the calm because, wow, if we have a much more significant system that could unfold as we head into next weekend with all these areas across the middle part of the country rapidly warm up. We don't get the benefits of the, any cooler shots of air by then. That more significant troughs moves out, out, out of the picture, out, even, in for the, even for the east. And we got the warm sector coming back into play with those 10 to 15 degrees, if not almost 20 degrees above average there in Iowa and in much of the upper Midwest. And we have an even deeper, more significant and that kind of a more horseshoe type trough that would come in on Saturday and Sunday. And you get one of these type features, these definitely likely would lead to a much more significant event as we head into Saturday and your Sunday. So even this far out, the, the difference between, you know, the Storm Prediction Center, the SIPS guidance and the learning guidance Kind of looks like this with this massive trough comes in of course we'll be fine tuning this but right now we've got a little bit of a respite between now and thursday it gets going on thursday night along the dry line in west texas and western oklahoma western oklahoma western kansas and that will swing across the upper midwest we've got a reinforcing a deeper trough that will be coming in for the weekend and then as this moves across the southern plains much of the much of the great plains here and of the upper Midwest, that would likely lead to more severe activity as we head into Saturday and Sunday of this next weekend that will be coming up. So guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update. Why I protect you before and after the storm.